Got a couple things in the mail for the CZ Scorpion. One is the reduced weight trigger spring kit from HB Industries. And the other one is a reverse safety from Gearhead Works. This is made out of uh, aluminum that's anodized. So it seems to be made very well. This firearm has been safety checked prior to doing this video. As you can tell, usually on the CZ Scorpion, the trigger is a little bit heavy. So we'll be fixing that today. Alright, so first things first, we will have to pull back on the charging handle to lock the bolt into the rearward position and then push this pin through and then pivot the trigger assembly housing lower receiver out of the CZ. Okay, I've already pulled the charging handle back. We'll push the pin out and it is captive. Now I can pull, it's so hard to do this with one hand. There we go, comes out, super easy. So this is what we'll be working with today. So the rest of this can be put aside and I can clear the table. Okay, now with a three millimeter and a 1.5 millimeter Allen key, first thing we want to do is I always push this lever back through the pin, even though it's captive, we just don't want to get in the way or snagging on anything. Now we need to get the safety off, which is the 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Having your safety in the fire position, you should be able to access that screw, which is right down there. Alrighty, so I will take my 1.5 millimeter Allen key, place it into the set screw, and I will then remove this screw out. One thing that you will want to keep in mind, there is a lot of thread locker on this screw and there is a lot of threads so it might be a little stiff at first but just take your time um, critical thing is you want to make sure that both of these allen screws screws that you do do not use a allen key that is close but not the right one because if you strip any of these out you will have to of course purchase new ones so as you can see this is now out this should come straight off Okay, this, oops, this came, I had to wiggle it, but it came straight up off. So this is the original one. Now this one here should press through and come right out. So now the only thing that's holding this trigger pack in is this three millimeter screw down below, which we should be able to access through this trigger guard here. And this is the heart of one hand, so I will do this off camera and be right back. Alright, I just got that screw out. Now, this trigger pack should come straight up and out of the... There we go. And there it is. So this is what we'll be working with here. So, to make this a little bit easier, I am going to put this in a vise to hold it so I can work on it. I have lightly placed it into my vise so I can still have access to these pins. You don't want to torque this down too tight. You don't want to deform the housing. It is just sheet metal, so be cautious about that. Just snug enough to where it holds it firmly. What we want to do now is we want to push the 5mm trigger pin through far enough to where we can pull the hammer out from the trigger pack. Not all the way through because we do not want the other components to come out yet at this time, but 
pin is coming out fairly easy. Like I said, we want to come out most of the way through just until we can get the trigger to come out just like so. Set that aside. All right, next, what we will do is pull this pin through just a little bit more until we can get our hammer spring out. We'll set that over here. Now, the HB Industries trigger spring kit comes with a small shim or a looks like a thin washer. That will be going in between the trigger disconnect here, this long bar with the shoe on the end of it, and the housing itself, if need be. If you notice there's a lot of friction between those two items, then when the disconnect comes out, you will put the shim, when you reassemble the trigger, you'll put the shim in between the housing and this trigger disconnect. So that way the friction between these two items here will be reduced, if need be. Not all triggers need it, but if you've noticed there's a lot of friction there, then uh, you will definitely want to put that shim in. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the trigger disconnect up against the housing with my finger really tightly right like this. I will take my other hand, pull this pin out, and then put pressure on this trigger spring and then pull this away. Okay, I've already relieved the pressure. That little arm hook you see there, that trigger spring actually fits up underneath of that. We will set that aside. Now we just need to push this pin through a little bit and get the rest of the components out. Um, with this here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to, since this has been taken apart, I'm going to go ahead and uh, smooth out some of the surfaces. I'm going to smooth, polish this top surface here, this surface here. On the trigger, I am going to polish this surface here. And then also, just like on the AKs, this back surface here. Anything that comes in contact with the disconnector and the, um, the other components where there's friction, I'm going to polish those. And to do so, I will be using the Mother's Mag in Aluminum Polish with a polishing wheel, buffing wheel. First I will be using a couple different grades of sandpaper. For the sandpapers I usually use start out with a 320 and then go to a 400. Um, I find that that's really you don't really need to go to a 600. You can go to a 5 or 600 later if you want but I found out using these two and then using the polishing compound has work, worked worked uh, very well. So, All right, now what we want to do is we want to push the three millimeter trigger pin through the trigger housing. This way, the other way, we push the hammer pin from the right, or from the left to the right, we want to do this pin from the right to the left. So as we push this through, we will take the spring out and then the various other items. Make sure you hold down on the disconnect. There is a spring down underneath here that's putting upward pressure on this disconnect. And you don't want to lose your or go looking for your disconnect on the floor or underneath of a bench. Okay, now that I've pushed that pin out somewhat, my, sorry about the lighting, my trigger pin, my trigger spring is now loose so I can go ahead and pull it away from the trigger pack. This is one of the things we'll be re we will be replacing but for now I'll just put it right there. As I said you want to hold down on this disconnect as we pull the pin out so this little spring and disconnector does not go flying across the room. As you can see there's still spring pressure on it. Okay I pushed the pin out it's far enough. Now these components can be Pulled up and out. This little spring, I don't want to lose it, but we'll put it over here with the rest of the items. See, it is kind of tiny. 
there's a little bushing in there we want to make sure we keep that too we can pull this far enough out to where we can get this component out so I put this sandpaper on top and like I said I'll start out with a 320 and then I will just go making sure this stays nice and flat I will make sure that this is as you can see it's really starting to help out so I'm gonna keep doing this till I get it a little bit flatter and then I will switch to the 400 doing the same thing you want to make sure you don't have this angled this way or this way it needs to be completely flat and you don't want it this way or this way like I said you want this surface to be completely smooth so I will continue to do this like I said it's hard to do it with one hand so I need to do this with two hands so I'm gonna put the camera down and come back in a second now I will take the disconnector and you want to make sure that when you have this on here that you have this as I said nice and flat you don't want it at an angle you don't want it at an angle this way or this way or this way you want to make sure it's completely flat one of the key things you want to not make sure you do not do is let's see if I can get a good picture of it here this little there it is um let's see how can I do this there we go this little surface right up underneath here this edge you do not want to get rid of this little sharp edge all you want to do is polish this surface here do not take this sharpness the sharp corner off of here if you do that you can make an unsafe trigger so if you are weary about doing anything like this it is best to have a gunsmith do this but I've done enough of my AK triggers that this is very similar to a double hook AK trigger. So, and then as same thing with this too. I will take this smooth side here, the smooth side here. And do not and not I will not mess with this bottom edge here. I won't mess with those. Now that I have my sanding done, this is kind of the thing you wanted to look like just come on and focus there you go like that there and this this is good here you don't forget the little edges there like the bolt runs across this so this will also help with the uh, cycling as far as the making it easier for the bolt to reset the trigger so I will take polishing mandrel and some mag and aluminum polish use that put a little bit on the mandrel and then I'm just going to go ahead and polish this as I as with anything what you want to do is as it's as the mandrels spin you want to make sure this that that is going downwards and not going upwards you don't want to take that edge off so you all and on this side I turn it around so the mandrel is spinning downwards not upwards Plus, if it's upwards, it'll catch, and it might fling this thing across the room. I don't want to do that. So, I want to maintain that sharp edge. Make sure the mandrel's going in a downward position. Alrighty, I have just got done polishing everything. Um, guns, I love this stuff, Gun Scrubber, for cleaning parts. It works really, really well. Definitely want to make sure everything is, all the compound is off of these. But as you can see, they have a fairly good polish to them I still got to wash my hands but um, doesn't have to be perfect perfect but this is going to help out a lot with the cycling it's going to make it a lot easier and like I said I didn't touch those back sides but I did the uh, hammer looks a lot smoother now if I can get it to focus there we go it's a little bit of a uh, pinging and looks like peening from the trigger being used but hopefully that'll stop I'm gonna keep an eye on that to see all right, I had one little thing I forgot, and is this here. I went ahead and polished the top of this. So, that way that will also aid in the cycling. 
These are our HB Industry components that we got. We will go ahead and be using this spring instead of the original and this uh, trigger spring also. The disconnect spring, trigger spring. Uh, we're going to see if we need this bushing or not. Uh, we'll see during the assembly if we need to install that or not. Alright, so I went ahead and placed the trigger housing back in the vise, making sure pinholes are accessible. So we will start by setting the trigger back into the trigger housing in the correct orientation, of course. That is always important. And I go down and kind of make sure that these will line up, which there we go. Now that I got the trigger in there, I want to take my trigger pin. I want to go ahead and stick it into the hole. I want to start it into the hole. So at least I can capture right. I don't want right as it starts to come through. I want to pull it back just a little bit. All right. Spatial bushing or whatever they, this is a little bushing that's called. We will set that down in the center. Sliding it back and then pushing our pin into a little bit. There we go. Just so it holds it. And I'm slowly pushing this in as I'm adding components in. Okay, so now what we want to do is add our little spring. There's a little tiny indentation down there. That's where this will go. Um, during the reassembly, I will be using a grease. Um, I've been using this weapon shield grease. Uh, the weapon shield oil has worked very well. I also like Militech 1, um, but I will be reassembling a lot of these components using the weapon shield grease. But you can use Battleborn or your CLP or any of the oils or lubricants that you prefer to use um, on your components. The most important thing is that you use some sort of lubricant. Don't ever run everything dry all the time because that's going to cause wear and it's just, you know, not good. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some of the grease to this pin and underneath this bushing and then reassemble it and then we'll put the disconnector in. Alright, I will take my spring and I will place it down inside of that little indentation. Okay, now I've put my little my disconnector spring in, got my bushing, a little bit of grease in there. Now I will put this uh, disconnect back in. Disconnector goes in this way, so I will need to make sure this gets in. Let me pause this and I'll get this retained by the trigger pin and I will be right back. All right, I have the disconnector captive. I did not push the pin all the way through, the trigger pin all the way through as you can see, but you can see that the spring is captive and the disconnector is not going anywhere. Now we will need to put the trigger spring in from HB Industries. Now with the HB Industries trigger spring you will notice that there is a tip that has orange paint on it that will go towards the front so we will place this in as so and then we will push the trigger pin through till it is even on both sides there we go now it is retained on both sides there and there so everything is installed as far as the rearward section now we're going to work on the front alrighty now with the trigger disconnect this has to go down in here the orange part of the spring goes down. So let's go ahead and bring that up and around. So this red, the orange little paint is hitting the bottom of the uh, um, trigger housing. 
Now, this part here, this part of the spring needs to go up underneath this. So as this is sitting in here like this, it has to go up underneath of this little, little arm, this little hand that sticks out. And then that, and in turn, goes down inside of the sear here. There's a notch there. Let me get a little bit more in light. That notch right there. So when this thing gets put back together, this will go inside of that notch just like that, but it'll have this spring up underneath. So this will take two hands. So, um, and as I stated, you can, or you, you can, or you don't have to, if you don't need it, put that shim in between these two surfaces. The shim will go here and it actually just helps this stick out just a little bit to stop the binding against this housing, so. Alrighty, I got it in. So as you can see, it is working one thing I did notice you want to make sure that up underneath there where that see how the orange is over along the side of the wall of the trigger pack there the trigger spring the orange tip is towards the corner of the wall and the floor of the trigger pack you don't want it to be over into the uh, next to the trigger um, if it gets caught in that little groove, just use a little thin screwdriver and pop it over to that side. It'll stay once it's out of that little groove. Um, I ended up using a little like eyeglass screwdriver. The okay, I have this installed now. I did put a little bit of grease on some things. So now we're going to redo the trigger spring. We'll put that back down inside of here. And then we'll do the hammer and we'll go from there. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the trigger back in. Or the hammer, I should say. Hammer goes in and you fiddle with this a tad. Alrighty, I got my pin in there. It is, it is also flush. Barely, barely see the little tip of it there. And then over here, it's flush there. So now I can take this trigger pack out. And we'll get it installed back into the firearm. Okay, now we will take our trigger pack that we've reassembled and polished our components. You just set right down in, just like that. Then we will put our screw back in through the bottom. I will go ahead and put a little bit of blue Loctite on this just to keep it in place and I will screw this back into that hole. Okay, I have already snugged the screw down. Now I will put the safety in. So the safety will go in from the left hand side over to the right hand side. So opposite of how, how it came out. Like that. But we will be putting our new uh, item on, our new uh, safety, reverse safety. So it's going to slide down on and then the screw will go down in through the center of this hole here. Alright, I got my screw in. One thing you definitely want to make sure that I just found out about as doing this is this little lever here, this little lever as you see right here, needs to be up on top of this. So this whole assembly can be pushed in far enough. Once it's up on that lip, then your, your holes will line up and then you can tighten this down. All right, now that we've got everything reassembled, we will push the pin out, pull, pull it out. Put the back of the trigger into the firearm. Push the pin back in. There we go. And now it is, it is installed. I release the bolt. Let's try this trigger now. Oh, much better. It's about half of what it is normally. That's still a lot better. 
I would say five, five to five and a half. Feels really good. So it was a little bit more than most, or more than a few might want to tackle. Like I said, if you have trouble doing anything like this, then definitely have a certified gunsmith do it. But it is nothing out of the ordinary that uh, if you do do small modifications that this isn't outside the realm of possibility. So um, I love this new safety. And then flick it down with the other one. You can either do it both sides here, but it, now what it is is it's down both ways. So you can flick the safety on or fire by flipping down with your thumb and then on safe by flicking down with your finger. So everything is in a downward position, which makes it easier for gross motor skills to manipulate. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, give the thumbs up or subscribe. Um, I am in the process of getting a newer camera, so I will be getting some footage of me actually doing some of the work. It's hard with one hand holding the camera. So, um, all right, hope you all have a safe day. Support the Second Amendment. Love America, and I'll see you in the next video.